Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The city has received one of the nation's highest awards for its budget. This award from the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada recognizes the city's budget for being clear, concise, and creative. The Finance Department had revamped the budget to complement the City Council's long-term financial planning efforts. The Water Services Department reminds residents to take precautions to keep pipes from freezing and bursting as the temperatures drop. Tips include keeping a thin stream of water running from a bathroom or kitchen faucet or leaving cabinet doors open below the faucets to let in heat from the house. It's also a good idea to insulate pipes or faucets in unheated areas using pipe wrapping materials that you can get from your local hardware store. If your pipes do break, emergency water cutoff is available from the city at a fee of $100. Call 311 to reach an attendant 24 hours a day. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples. I'm the fire marshal for the Kansas City Fire Department. I'm here today to talk to you about fire safety and the importance of smoke alarms in your home. A smoke alarm is one of the most important fire safety items you can have in your home. No home safety plan can begin without a smoke alarm being in place. Smoke alarms are so important because they can cut down on the, the risk of death in a fire by an early alert and it's a reduction of up to 50% chance of dying in a fire if you have a properly placed working smoke alarm. Let's talk about properly working smoke alarms. They have to be maintained. A smoke alarm needs to be vacuumed once a year just to get it clean and change the battery once a year. There are batteries that are 10-year lithium ion, they're tamper proof, and that's the modern smoke alarm that you can find in hardware stores, retail outlets, etc. We even have some on the Kansas City Fire Department that we can give away for free. And the Kansas City Fire Department will even install those for you. If you would like one of these smoke alarms, you can call 816-784-9100 and place an order for your smoke alarm. If you would like to pick one up at your local fire station, stop in, pick up an alarm. If you need some assistance with the installation, that fire station will be happy to help you with the installation of that smoke alarm. Now, it's very important to understand that a smoke alarm is designed to give you an early alert, so you need to have it in the right place. There's directions in every box with the smoke alarm that tells you where it needs to be placed, but it doesn't hurt to be reminded. You absolutely have to have a working smoke alarm just outside of every sleeping area, if not inside every sleeping area. And we like to see them in every bedroom if you sleep with the door closed. Kansas City Fire Department wishes you a happy and safe holiday season. Did you know there's a way to get answers from KCPD without calling 911? The number 234-5111 is available for non-emergency inquiries. Communications Supervisor Jeannie Rast explains. The number 234-5111 is answered or monitored on a 24-hour basis here in the communications unit. Whenever they call in, they could ask things um, about illegally parked cars, about a stealing that might have happened at their house. They don't know when it happened or who was the suspect. Um, a noise disturbance if there's not a fight involved, but it's a large crowd. Stolen autos if they don't know who's taken the stolen auto. They do have a time span, let's say, quite a while or overnight and they don't know who the suspect is, also that kind of call. 311 takes care of calls for service that would pertain to animal health calls. Um, the illegally parked cars also, if they're a nuisance or abandoned, they take those. But with us, we're more of an informational, um, where you could call, a number where you can call and ask any type of question. We do get some calls where they are not police related, but we will make references or possibly answer the question if we know the answer. The 911 calls come in to the call center and they are the higher priority. So those calls are answered first. And then once all the 911 calls are answered, it would go to that informational line of 234 51111. And that way, um, it kind of gives a higher priority to the 911 callers. 
some of the things that are asked to on the number that are non-emergency, if there's a race downtown or an event downtown or anywhere in the city, if any of the streets are going to be closed, they can call. Um, a lot of times, too, if there's storm-related questions, um, people are trying to see what areas might have problems um, to check on loved ones. That might be the number to call would be the 234-5111. The 234-5111 number is the non-emergency number for the police. The city also provides information from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday at their 311 number or 513-1313. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Bay has been supporting Bee Health for more than 25 years and um, as an agricultural company we recognize the importance of pollinators. More than one third of every bite of food that we eat is pollinated by honeybees and also about 80% of all of the flowers and plants many of which you see here in this beautiful park also require uh, pollination. We're very pleased to be able to plant a pollinator patch here, which will really help raise the awareness about the importance of pollinators and uh, what people can do to help establish forage and good nutrition and uh, habitat uh, for pollinators. We are in Kansas City, and Kansas City, for those of you that, that know, is known for boulevards and fountains and, and many pretty flowers. And of course, where there are flowers, there are honeybees. So there's a nice connection there. As far as Bayer Crop Sciences operations here in Kansas City, we've been here for more than 50 years. And we're very proud of our longstanding support of partnerships and collaborations. And they make our over 700 employees here in Kansas City a strong part of our community. I actually am a kind of amateur landscape designer myself, and I do design gardens for Keep Kansas City Beautiful, which is part of Bridging the Gap. So I did some of the research on the bee gardens, and then I had grown-ups look at my work and make sure that I was doing the right thing. Actually, Bill Fessler looked it over. Uh, the Missouri Department of Conservation has approved this patch to make sure that we have everything just right for the bees. But I want to share with you a few things that I learned in the process, because I didn't really know that much about uh, gardening for bees. Um, obviously, we want plants that bees love. But what does that mean? Well, it means uh, pretty much year-round bloom if we can possibly do it. And that means that instead of doing a lot of repeating that you might usually do in a garden design, we've actually got a diversity of species with a lot of different flower shapes and colors because bees have color sensors. Um, right behind me is a witch hazel that can actually bloom in winter and it's a native plant. Um, so trying to support them with, with food year-round. Um, we try to plant in swaths also, which makes it easier for the people that are going to maintain the garden. If they're weeds, they can see where there are a lot of one kind of plant, and they, they know then what a weed is. But it also helps the bees move from plant to plant. So we're doing a pollinator patch planting partnership in a park, right? So how many peas can we get out there? Uh, it's a great opportunity, and there again, we're glad you're here today, and thanks for the beautiful weather. Uh, we'd expect this usually on the middle part of August, and uh, so let's enjoy it, and we're glad for the opportunity. Uh, once this is planned today, uh, we get the opportunity to maintain it, which I think is great. We can find the weeds between where they should be weeds and should not be weeds, and a little bit of mulching going along with that. And thanks for the opportunity. Uh, thanks for choosing the Lakeside Nature Center, and uh, thanks for coming to Swell Park. Like three or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Call out, Heidi. Here. Okay, one, <laughs> two, three. Leaf and brush collection continues in the north zone the week of December 2nd and in the central zone the week of December 9th. Please note that leaf and brush curbside pickup for south zone residents has already wrapped up. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org slash trash and click on Leaf and Brush Collection. Nonprofit organizations that host cultural, social, historic, educational, or recreational activities may apply for a grant from the city's Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. 
This fund is now accepting grant applications for activities taking place in March and April of 2014. Applications must be received by January 15th. For details, see kcmo.org slash ntdf or call 816-513-3220. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.